I've had an incursion. I've been raided. Or I should say, I've been actually visited. A couple of weeks back, I had a rather nice visit from Mr. Paul Hopewell and his beloved wife. That's obviously Mr. and Mrs. Shed Dweller. And they popped down to see me. I think it took them two hours to get here, and we had a, a really, really nice afternoon. During the afternoon, we had a few discussions about accuracy on lathes and various other things, and we chewed the cud on lots and lots of issues. An extremely clever man. And one of the things we talked about is the accuracy, or trying to get accuracy, on a lathe, because it's something I need to try and practice. I am not that accurate with the machine. As people used to say to you, are you a plasterer? No, but I can plaster. Are you a machinist? No, but I can use a machine, to a certain degree. So anyway, Paul was saying about various things, and I said one of the suggestions, or one of the things I was planning on doing, is fitting a DRO to this lathe. And I've got the very cheap version of the eye gauging scales. And one of the things I wanted to do with this particular scale is, if I mounted it, I wanted to make sure that the reed head was fixed because I wanted the display as close as possible to one side with no movement in the cable because these are not really the best for moving around and they've got a tendency of failing because at the end of the day, it's just a USB lead. So after looking in various positions, as in trying to put it under there, which is way too close to the busy end, or trying to put it there, at the back end I decided it wouldn't work because if it went there it would actually be obstructing where the tailstock comes in through the back so I needed to come up with a different idea an alternative method is to mount some sort of a gauge into this position and I've seen a lot of people on YouTube using this and then you can actually use the actual gauge to give you your final reference for where you cut in and whatever else it's great in most circumstances, a bit difficult for me because obviously I've got a gap bed with a gap. So I'd have to make either an extremely long bracket, which would span that. And if I was working possibly all the way up there, I'd be midway point and make it difficult. And also, that would be also restricted just to this one axis. But I want to try and make something for the two. So I came up with a bit of a solution. And the solution started with one of these because I was actually trying to do it as in mount that on there and get a read in and then see if I could actually swing it around and do it for the opposite way. So let me show you what I've done. It's probably been done before but it's my attempt at it. So I've made this. Basically it was a lump of aluminium. Um, I've made it into an angle iron shaped lump of aluminium with a hole and a slot and another hole. I got one of them, which is a spare. Well, it's not actually a spare. It was the magnet I used to use to mount my welding torch for TIG welding. But we'll go through it. I'd like to show you what I've done. I don't know what, if I put it up that way, it's going to make it easier for me to do and you to see. By the way, I do apologise for my absence over the last few weeks. Um, I've had some issues, which I'm not exactly going to go into, but it means that it's not a case I can't get down the workshop, it's a case I can't leave the house. But we'll go into that again some other time. It may affect uploads in the future. We'll have to see. Right. So, we've got a mag mount with a block. Cheap digital um, dial indicator from Evil Bay. We all love Evil Bay. What slots into there. And then, I'll tell you what, I'm going to have to be pedantic. Is that square? That's better. After I spent all that time machining it, well, I didn't spend that much time machining it, but... Give that a little pinch. Thank you. That's what we have. So should we go back over to the lathe and see what I've done? So this little contraption sits quite neatly there. 
Turn the magnets on. Turn that on. And now I've got a reading in and out. Admittedly, when it's going towards the centre of the spindle, it is reading backwards. And the one thing I need to remember, which you probably can't see on here, is the fact that this is reading material removed from radius. My dial reads material removed from diameter. So I have to remember that whatever I want, it has to be half on there. The other advantage, so obviously, like I said, you can see that I'm moving backwards and forwards. If I turn that off, I've configured it, so that if I switch that off, turn it around, and put it down onto the bed, switch it back on, and turn that on, I can now read carriage movement back and forth with the same tool. So I've basically done away with having to use... Oh, where's it gone? One of these bloody things. So I've got a combined tool, which I can switch from position to position. And it'll give me somewhat more of an accurate measurement rather than trying to read off the dials, which are not that accurate because I made them. So it's a nice little cheap fix. Um, I think this digital gauge, which, because you can just zero at any spot, and if you need to go in half a mil, two thou or whatever else, you can then take in the actual measurement, you can zero again. It just makes it a little bit easier for the reading, and of course we can go over to Imperial, and then we're just going up in thousand, half thou's there, look. And of course this is in both axes, so it just makes it that little bit easier for me, because I'm not that clever. The last thing I want to share with you today is the fact I've started to make the ring. And this is obviously going to be marked up in 360 degrees. The idea being that when you've got a set, you can put it on and you can rotate it around to your zero point or whatever else. So I'll set the set of marks up and then it'll be calibrated all the way around, which means you can reset it the same as on a mirror machine or a lathe. Uh, it's one of the things I dislike I find quite difficult with a conventional rotary table because obviously the graduations are fixed. So if you're starting from 294, you've got to do your mathematics thereafter. But the idea with this, you set the zero, set the marker, drop her on, rotate her around, and then that's going to be your zero mark so you know exactly where you are. Now, you know me, I don't keep secrets. And I've got to tell you that this was formed out of a piece of... Bar, flat bar, uh, three eighths by inch, twenty five mil by ten. Which I had to roll. Well, I didn't roll. I actually formed it in the vice a bit at a time. And because I haven't welded for a long time, especially aluminium, and even though I am a self-professed welder uh, who had his first code in at probably the age of eleven or twelve, I couldn't get it to weld. Um, I'm not exactly the best with aluminium because I don't do it a lot. I think the last time was 18 months ago. And I'm going to show you my failure because I've done some scrap, uh, well, welding on scrap before I started. And it's abysmal. Look. Absolutely terrible. And it doesn't matter what I did, how I cleaned it, uh, preparation, tungstens, current, um, you name it. I just couldn't get it to weld properly. And I was just getting terrible, terrible problems. I got it to stick together. But the welding is atrocious. I even messaged my mate and said, do you want to buy a TIG set? Because obviously I can't do it anymore. I gave it an hour, came back down, and I welded it perfect. And I don't know if you can actually see it, but that is the actual weld there. My problem, I will show you. One welding rod I was using to weld the aluminium. The second attempt, the welding rod. I was actually trying to weld aluminium with a stainless steel welding rod. So that just shows that even somebody who thinks they can do the job can make mistakes. Thanks to all the subscribers. I've just hit over 500. It's amazing. I can't believe the amount of support I'm getting. I'm sorry for the delays in um, producing another video. You were taking the time to subscribe. I'm not taking the time to provide. 
I'll do my best to get more stuff out soon. Later.